Hi everyone, my name is Darren. I work at a DI Data Infer Storage Engine team at Meta. So today, uh, welcome to our talk on um, MetaLeak, a mutable data warehouse solution at Meta at scale. So um, this is empowers our AI and machine learning workload. Specifically, I will talk about feature injection and the optimizations we applied in feature injection pipelines. Thank you, Constantinos, to setting up all the contacts that makes my talk way easier. <laughs> okay, uh, we will spend a few minutes talk about what is Meta Lake, why we built Meta Lake, and the key features in Meta Lake, and how how this Meta Lake works internally at a high level. And then we will dive into the use cases for feature injection and how Meta Lake plus Velox accelerate machine learning engineers to adding their features uh, to the fly map and modify the existing fly map on the fly and make it more efficient for, uh, for the pipelines within one hour. And we will also talk about all these optimizations, maybe picks two of them to uh, dive into it to explain how these optimizations work at a matter, how we optimize it. Okay. Let's start with the motivation. Why we need to build Meta Lake. Um, Meta actually open sourced Hive back in 20, uh, 2009. Um, this is an immutable solution in the warehouse. Hive Meta Store is the backbone our, of our warehouse. And it supports, the, the IT idea is to organize the data in a directory tree. So this works well and it's reliable for a decade, over, over a decade, but it's designed to be immutable. Um, so in the past few years, with the surging needs of training data growth and a lot of use cases coming to us, we need to mutate the data in, more, in a more efficient way. So th that's why we need to build something on top of high meta store to, be, to make the data immutable. All right, so prior to meta, the traditional way of doing this is to, to do insert override. Like the reading the entire training table and modify a small fraction of data and reinsert override back to the directory. That's how typically uh, it works with the immutable architecture. As the business grows, we have a lot of use, case, use cases coming to us, trying to solve two categories of problems, privacy and training. We are required to remove rows from the table to nullify the entire column, or we need to do training, uh, training experimentations in a different data set, a playground. And today we will dive into feature injection specifically, how it helps the machine learning engineer to evolve, in, evolve their um, training lifecycle to be way, way faster and with, small, with, with a high velocity. Okay, so what is Meta Lake? Meta Lake is an in-house um, solution for mutability warehouse. This supports super efficient column updates and the row deletion. This is transactional and we, we support data, data, kind of data mutations. Okay, let's walk through one quick example how column update works. So, Think about you have a table with three rows. You want to update the entire column, city, to a constant value, metal part. So in a traditional warehouse, uh, a traditional MySQL database, what would you do? You just run an update query, very simple. But in the immutable warehouse, what would be the, uh, what would be the common way of doing that? There are usually two ways. One is to copy on write. You selectively pick some files you want to mutate and replace the file in place. And the second way is what we're trying to do is merge on read. Since our data is immutable, sealed in a directory, we need to create some extra data files to, to merge on the fly. Okay, this is the delta files we create trying to implement this update feature. So we will have some synthetic data, a synthetic columns stored in the delta file, and the data columns stored as CD, as metal park. Now, when merge happens, we overlay this delta file on top of the base file and associate 
the row numbers sequentially with the base file. That achieves the merge on read with the correct merge result. This is a high-level architecture, how we evolve from the immutable architecture with Metastore to the current uh, Metalake solution. So in Metastore, all the partition, under the partition object, when you insert, override a bunch of files, it's written to a directory, and this directory will be uh, hooked to the partition object. That's a very traditional way of doing insert override. But how can we associate the base files with our actual data delta files? We introduce a, another layer under the partition we call commit chain model. So when you issue an update query or delete query, we create a bunch of delta files stored in a delta directory. And this directory will be um, under this new commit, which is update commit. So we remodel the insert override directory and wrapped into a commit into the insert commit now with the new with the mutation no more mutation query is coming we will drop more and more commits in this commit chain so at some point we need to do compaction and to make the merge merge on read more efficient okay let's dive into the feature injection use case feature injection the goal is to efficiently enrich our training data set with additional features or modify existing features. This feature can be a single column, can be a, a map key entries. So in the traditional uh, workflow, this is how insert override works. We extract some features from the, an, another feature table F, and we're trying to inject them into the training table. What we do is do a left outer join, from training table T and the feature table F. We select the additional fe in injected features and all the existing columns from the training table. We create a new table. That's how, how, we work, how it works with the insert override solution. But com as a comparison, for metallic based feature injection, we run an update using PySpark plus Velox, um, Velox data frame. So we only need to selectively choose which column we update. We drop the delta files. Uh, more advancedly, we also invent this map concat uh, solution. Basically, we only need to drop the single features we want to modify. So when we read, we do a uh, we do a merge on read and stitch the map key map entries on the fly. OK, uh, this is a high level uh, workflows we do the merge. So when the training data lands, the, the table, training table will join with a feature table, and we create a wide partition. As a, pers as a comparison, in the metallic based uh, feature injection, we only drop one skinny delta files with limited columns or map keys, which was way more efficient. But the cost is we need to do the mer merge on read on the fly. So as Constantinus already mentioned, um, the, the workflow actually achieved uh, two, mag two orders of magnitude improvements. This is, we are using the path by level data join. So you can tell like the numbers has been re uh, significantly reduced by um, 75x, and then using Spark plus Velox plus Metallic solution, we reduce within one hour. This is, again, it's like petabyte level data join. Okay, uh, let's dive into some Velox optimizations. Uh, since Pedro and Constantinos already mentioned a lot of optimizations we did in the right, right hand, so I will focus on the read-time optimization, how we merge the data in DPP. So this achieves uh, reduce the latency regression from 200% to down to 130%, and then we are continuously improving it. All right, so the first optimizations we did is on the update merger. So when we're trying to merge the base commit 
all the insert files with the delta files in DPP, we actually need to consider how we stitch the file in a more efficient way. Here I want to just quickly introduce the concept of batch. Batch is, in Vlox we call it a row vector. So usually in DPP we maintain a fixed size of bat, batch, which is a row, row group, row, row batch, and we process it in a batch fashion. Okay, how we position the BIOS file and the Delta files. Here we use one-to-one -one file mapping to stitch the base file to the Delta file and they are row by row aligned, one file by file aligned. That way we can sequentially load the data into, into different batches and the batch size are fixed. Ideally we can stitch, the, stitch two batches in a more efficient way in Vlox. This is a naive implementation. Uh, without Vlox we can do row by row scan and copy the cell value from Delta file to base file but this row by row copy definitely it's very expensive. If we use Vlox, we can do vectorized copy, which basically within a batch, we copy the entire column to the left hand side, a little bit faster. The more efficient way of doing that is if the entire column we need is already in the Delta file, why should we read the base file column? If, especially when the base file column is huge. Data loading into memory costs a lot of effort. So the innovation we have is we directly point, just like pointer, we directly point to the delta column score and append this column to the left hand side, create a new row vector. That way we minimize the data copy. So this is more, this is about align the batch merger. Okay, um, but there's always a gotcha. The, the batch size are not always aligned. The reason is we have file stripes. Between every file stripe, there's a boundary. Every time we hit a boundary, you will have a remainder of rows uh, falling into a small batch. Uh, people may already familiar with file stripe, basically it's the row groups, ch row chunks within a file, ORC file. And what you can specify is the physical bytes in a stripe. And you divide it by average row size in byte, you get the row count per stripe. So every row count per stripe is different. Okay, um, so here we also need to, need to do the rebatch. The way we do rebatch, naive way of doing that is uh, in this example, on the left-hand side, we have base files, which has a larger stripe size, and on the left-hand side, the delta file, which has a smaller delta stripe size. Now, we sequentially scan the two files, load them into batch. When we hit the, the first stripe boundary on the left-hand side, we have a problem. We need to forward looking to fetch the second batch, which is batch two dash. Now what we're going to do is copy these two batch and align with the left hand side batch. If this batch is encoded, the first thing we need to do is flatten the two, co two delta vectors and do two range copy to the large vector. This is quite expensive, right? It costs decoding costs, uh, lose, the, lose the encoding, and you did early materialization, basically lose the, uh, you, you don't even preserve the encoding during the batch. And this happens over time where you hit every single um, delta boundary. All right, the question is, how can we further optimize to preserve the encoding? Let's take an example using dictionary encoding. The goal is to merge two delta vectors. And this is how dictionary uh, vector look like. You maintain two vectors. One is index vector to record every single element. And you have a value vector to record where you can look up. Here we can look up three city values. The best case scenario is these two de delta vector, they share the same superset of values. 
Now, what we're trying to merge is we can reuse the values vector because they are shared. And then we just merge the two indexes, which is quite cheap, comparing to merge, to flatten the, the diction vector and merge all the, all the real repeated values. Especially in the flat map, you have like thousands of floats and store in the, in the uh, features. Uh, this, this cost will be amplified. But in most cases, the diction values are not reusable. In this example, uh, on the second delta vector, we have a unique value, San Diego. Now, how can we merge to these two value vectors? So the innovation is, why not just merge the values which are not referenced by the first vector? Since the San Diego is not used in the second, uh, in the first delta vectors, we can simply merge these unique values into a new value vector. That minimizes the data copy, only copy the, uh, the not referenced values from the second vector. And similarly, we need to merge the index value vectors. But there's a gotcha here. Since the, since the value has been shifted, we need to do the index remapping, which from uh, one to two. So with this optimization, we bring down oh, we bring down the read regression from 200 percent to 170 percent. There are other optimizations we are still continuously working on, trying to bring down this number even closer to minimize the regression. All right. To recap, Meta Lake introduced a partition local commission model and associate with Delta files, uh, create this base file to Delta file association policies and achieved mutability at scale. And feature injection is becoming way lightweighted. We can only need to drop a very small portion of the, of the columns to disk and we merge on the fly. This helps the machine engineers to achieve the feature preparation pipeline and they can parallel their ideas and try on different experimentations. And VLOX here plays a key role to accelerate both write pass and repass with uh, vectorized join and efficient rebatching techniques. Okay, thanks for listening. Thank you, Darren. Uh, we have a few minutes, any questions before? Oh, yes, Deepak, here. Uh, one quick question. So for the um, uh, lake metadata part, was the reason not to choose an open format like uh, Iceberg or Delta? Hello, hello. Uh, yeah. So uh, the reason we didn't, uh, we didn't choose uh, Iceberg and Delta is um, we have this high meta store. Uh, all, uh, the entire data warehouse is built on type of high meta store. So we're trying to keep the change minimal out of the existing immutable data structure. But we, we definitely evaluate it. Uh, we already have Hive Meta store, but we are also using Iceberg. So what was the reason like you are using HDFS, uh, a decision maker in using this, I mean deploying this? One of the reasons uh, we are using our own file system called Warm Storage File System, and uh, it's more like a HDFS, and it doesn't maintain the replications. So we don't have a strong replication um, policy to maintain those metadata files. And also we have some uh, bottleneck if you, if you want to store this metadata, uh, data metadata file on the warm storage file, and there's a ra rate limit for those small files. So we need to solve these problems before we move to Iceberg. Hey, um, a quick question. Is Meta Lake open sourced or is it planned to be open sourced uh, as well? Uh, we haven't discussed this yet, but definitely there are some innovations like the update merger part, uh, which make the merge on read way faster, could be open sourced, but it's still on the fly to, for discussion.